Please welcome Maggie Rausch, Senior Director, Research and Head Analyst, and Lorraine Cilio, Senior Vice President, Research and Business Operations. Anyone who's ever driven long distances as a child remembers that restless whine. Are we there yet? For me, it was a 20-hour car ride from New York City to Miami in a 1969 Buick LeSabre with no air conditioning. It seemed like we would never get to the promised land. Looking back now, I wish I had paid more attention to the journey, but I just wanted to get there. That doesn't sound so different from my family trips decades later. Nine hours across the Midwest in a 1986 Chevy station wagon, Six bored kids with no concept of time. In many ways, we're still like those restless kids, filled with anticipation, each day getting closer to our destination. The evolution of online travel has also been quite a journey, with many highs and deep lows, wonderful characters, shifting weather, detours, bumps in the road, and several surprises along the way. Luckily, I have had a front row seat on this trip, as have many of you. If we want to pinpoint where we are now, where we're going, and whether expectations are being met, we'll have to start with a quick look back at where we've been. 20 years ago, online travel was in its infancy. So words like wired, convergence, distressed inventory, last minute, and information superhighway became part of our vernacular. In 2000, Focusrite sized the U.S. online travel industry at 2.6 billion and projected 173% growth for the following year. Wow, but I guess triple-digit growth isn't that hard to come by when you're starting from zero. There's nowhere else to go no. but up. Well, very true. At that time, only 3% of Americans had actually booked travel online, and most of that was point-to-point -point air. By 2000, Focusrite crowned the online travel market the fastest-growing e-commerce category in the world, poised to surpass 20 billion by 2001. In only a couple of years, millions of people found a new way to shop for and purchase their trips and would never look back. But tech was slow, the sites were complicated, and the navigation clunky. But that didn't matter, because chasing the deal became fun sport, even if it was often excruciating. Those are hideous. Um, so what we had to do was fix the user experience, and the rest was history? Not even close. So the next 10 years would be competitive and chaotic, very chaotic. Companies, they came and went, each leaving its own legacy. Many died off or got acquired, some were reinvented, and a few rose to prominence. We owe a lot to those early online travel pioneers 
who had to endure board battles, press pressure, shareholder stress, and economic angst to keep the enthusiasm up and the cash flowing. Leadership, vision, passion, risk-taking, and lots of money made all the difference. They still do. In those days, we made some bold predictions, like many travelers would still be using the telephone for years excuse, to come. Excuse me, Lorraine, the telephone? Yes, Maggie, the telephone. And we weren't exactly wrong. One billion smartphones would soon invade travel planning and purchasing. We also said the GDSs aren't going to disappear overnight. And guess what? They're mostly still around in one form or another, although they work hard every day at staying relevant. I mentioned the deep lows that we encountered as an industry and, and as a nation and, and, and around the world. When the worst happened at 9-11, travel was at a brief standstill. No one knew how to move forward or if we ever would. But then there was that moment when Barry Diller, chairman of IAC, instead of backing out of that $1.5 billion deal to control Expedia, immortalized the phrase, where there is life, there is travel. That mantra continues to highlight the resiliency of our industry in the face of adversity. Somehow, the U.S. online travel market still reached the 20 billion projected for 2001. As we all adjusted to the new normal, travel and e-commerce surged. U.S. online penetration was just 9% in 2001 and climbed to 25% globally by 2009, shortly after the birth of Airbnb and the smartphone. Intermediary brands staked out positions by segment, geography, and their place in the funnel. Customer acquisition sparked a race to the bottom with rampant discounting, nowhere more so than in Asia. Eventual mergers and acquisitions across the globe brought economies of scale that would be important in the fight to come, as we would soon all learn that you don't have to be a travel brand to upend travel. With smartphones on the rise, travelers in established markets like the US and Europe gradually took to on-the-go travel shopping. Emergent markets adapted more quickly, embracing the new platform as an end-to-end -end tool for travel inspiration, shopping, purchasing, and sharing. China's OTAs now take more than 80% of bookings by smartphone, pushing global mobile volume past 240 billion. But the smartphone's influence goes beyond simple shift from one device to another. It has played an important role in some of the biggest stories of recent years. So let's take a look at some of those major events that have defined our industry so far. Airbnb, HomeAway, and other short-term vacation brands have reshaped the hospitality marketplace, which recently surpassed Air as the world's largest travel segment. Uber took the convenience of the app to new heights, making it easier for all of us to get around, and also generating an additional 50 billion in travel gross bookings in 2011. Eight car rental companies became five, became three. Same with airlines, OTAs, and soon hotel chains. In 2000, 20 travel deals were made, totaling 1.8 billion. Now one company can claim that in a single year. And who wouldn't want to invest in a fragmented offline industry worth $160 billion and built around the fun part of travel? Ketchup is no longer the name of the game. This region is home to the world's most mobile-savvy travelers and is leading the way into a post-search, post-cash future. How else do you explain 65 billion in a la carte ancillaries in 2018, including baggage fees, extra legroom, and meals? There's less, ex less speculation these days about what they are going to do and more discussion about what we'll need to do in this new reality. Yes, lots of things happen to shake up our industry, 
Surely, with all this activity and investments and passion, entrepreneurship, discovery and innovation, we're getting closer to being there, aren't we? As my father used to say, from the front seat of that station wagon, if you have to ask, Lorraine, the answer is no. There's still so much more to accomplish, and the pace of change is accelerating. We see this cycle over and over again through the decades. Bright ideas become buzzwords. Buzzwords become banalities. Personalized offers, peer-to-peer -peer marketplaces, frictionless trip planning, voice search and book, the blockchain. These technologies have indeed fueled startups, sparked pivots, and strategic shifts, but none have upended travel as we know it or delivered on their most optimistic promises yet. Consider this. Who can forget the years of big data hype? Personalization has been an industry buzzword for decades, but more than 20 years later, it still eludes us. AI and machine learning are becoming more useful, but it's hard to tailor and target a product purchased just a few times a year, often for completely different purposes. All the data scientists and all the neural nets haven't put the pieces together quite yet. Travel agents are great at it. But are travelers really empowered to build their own trip? Airline tickets, hotel rooms, private accommodation, rail, car hire, car rental, not to mention tourist activities and events, all sit in silos. Whatever happened to customizable plans that combine modes of transport, lodging, and things to do with painless payments across all segments and languages? Industry buzzwords like seamlessness and the frictionless future say it all. The operative word here is future. More than half of the global travel market is still booked offline, often because of lack of tools, tech, or bandwidth. Yes, there are hundreds of millions of travelers who've just purchased their first smartphone and are planning their first trip. But how do we empower people from all corners of the globe to be the true adventure seekers they are meant to be? And whether you look at age, race, ability, or gender, just think how much new ground we can open if decision makers are as diverse as the travelers themselves. Hotels, airlines, car rental companies, online travel agencies, travelers hunt the best deal instead of showing true allegiance to brands. It's not for lack of trying. Aren't millions of dollars still being poured into the same loyalty programs, offering the same elusive benefits? Perhaps travel will never garner true loyalty from its customers. Or perhaps loyalty programs just need to be reinvented into something new or more effective. In 2012, three years after launching his lodging disruptor, the CEO of Airbnb declared that the sharing economy would remake businesses from hotels to real estate to autos. We believed him, and many have bet that the future of hospitality looks more like home. The sharing economy is now mainstream, but coexists with conventional models. Or maybe the rise of Gen Z will mean that traditional hotels do eventually go the way of the traditional travel agent. Finding solutions to these problems and realizing we're not alone in our ambitions is why we're all here today. No, we're not there yet, but isn't that a good thing? The road is long and the route's infinite. While we don't know exactly what the landscape will look like five years from now, we do know it will be very different than it is today. End-to-end -to -end solutions, connectivity to local content, relevant recommendations, true personalization, and the connected trip are what we're all striving for, but few will conquer. Every time the industry achieves a new milestone or invents a new segment, disruption is sure to follow. Billions are flowing into startups, tackling one or more of these challenges in our industry. And each year, we seem to get closer. But there is not a finish line or the top of a mountain. There is the horizon that we keep our eyes on, strive toward, but never reach. By its nature, a moving target. Welcome to the Focus Right Conference, where travel's brightest leaders take stock of our industry's past and plot its future. Have we reached the milestones we expected to? 
For those who pursue the many unrealized dreams of travel transformed, a clear view of the road ahead will separate the leaders from the long shots. When we think about the potential of tech to deliver the perfect path to the perfect trip, we may never get there, but we'll never stop the chase. Let's, Let's start, start the, the show. show.